Praise the Lord. Good that we have church. Good we have the word of God. We have the Lord. We have the fire. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the promise. We have hope. We have got future. We've got our promises of the Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. So glad to have you tonight. We're going to hold on to Jesus. The world is a mess. People are a mess. But the world we're connected to is intact, right? We're going to trust God and believe the Lord. Amen. Good to have Sister Barb tonight back with us. And Sister, Sister, uh, 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 Joy, uh, uh. Mana, gracious alike. My head, where did my head go? When you find my brains, give them back to me, okay? <laughs> I, I looked at you and I went blank. Lord have mercy. Good to have both these ladies back with us tonight. You know that? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand together. Praise the Lord. And we'll begin the service in prayer. Oh, praise God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We love you and we praise you. We worship you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and it's good to have the body of Christ together tonight. Pray for your blessing. Pray for your power. Pray for your spirit. Pray for your outpouring. Pray for hungry hearts. Pray for a desire for God and a closer walk with you, Lord God, and a desire for the word of the Lord. God, we thank you, God. Bless the time together. Bless the worship. May we give you glory and worship you in spirit and truth tonight. Thank you, Father. Inviting the Holy Spirit. Have your way in this house, God. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Turn and greet each other tonight, all right? God bless you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God all the glory and all the praise. Good to be in the house of God. Amen. God is good, church. He's a good God, great God. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing with all your heart. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me. I will enter. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, sing it, church. Amen. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has. I will enter his gates. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will one more time, let's sing it. I will enter his gates with all your heart. I will enter, give God all the glory, hallelujah. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just worship the Lord tonight. 
We had a busy and hectic day. We just come into your, his presence tonight and just get our hearts and our minds focused on the Lord, our spirits focused on the Lord tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Thank God that we have a living hope. Thank God for the promises that we have in the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's sing glory to his name. Verse 1. Amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I died. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved. Thank God we're saved. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Lift your voices. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of Precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad that I entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood. chorus again. Amen. And glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his. Verse 4. Amen. Oh, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. As thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. And glory to his name. And there to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Let's sing it slow now. And glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you worship the Lord tonight with me? Amen. From your heart. Worship God from your heart. Amen. Just tell the Lord that you love him. Begin to cry out to God and say, Lord, I praise you. I worship you. Regardless of how you feel, I choose to praise you. I choose to worship you. The song we just sang has so much theology in it. We're saved because of the blood, because of the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. He puts joy in our heart. We have the peace of God. We have a future. We have a hope. Praise God. We have a personal relationship with the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. I remember reading where one preacher said, nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about having a personal relationship with God. I thought, well, buddy, when you get saved, you'll know exactly what that is. You'll have a personal relationship with God. Because I know what it is to be religious. How many were stuck in a religious religion one time? Just stuck in religion. Amen. But never saved. You know what I'm talking about? Churchgoers but not saved. Amen. I was one of those, but when you get saved, hallelujah, that changes everything. Now you have a personal relationship. Jesus is real. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Praise God. So I want you just to come into the presence of the Lord tonight. Let your guard down. You don't have to put your guard up with God, okay? Just put your guard down. Just say, God, I love you. Hallelujah. Just take a moment tonight and worship the Lord. See, we're not so much on a time schedule tonight, so we can relax a little bit, okay? Hallelujah. Just worship. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, God, and we love you and we praise you. 
Thank you that you've saved my soul. Thank you that I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you that I know you. Hallelujah. I know your voice. I know your word. I know your ways. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost that makes Jesus real in our hearts and lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you need a refilling of the Lord. Well, tonight's the night. Just do it. Just, I want to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be refilled right in the middle of the service, right? Sister Jan got baptized in the Holy Ghost right in the service. Oscar got baptized in the Holy Ghost in the middle of worship. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? There are some other people that came to visit our church, got baptized in the Holy Ghost in our service. They didn't come back. I don't know why, but anyway, I would. Wouldn't you? If God baptized me, if God touched me, if God revealed himself, I'd say, you know what, that's the kind of church I want to go to. My Lord. I don't get some folks. Amen. I don't know. That's up to them, I suppose. But I tell you what, let's just be refilled with a God tonight. Amen. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. Have your way in our hearts tonight, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For He is our God. And the sheep of his hand, just the sheep of his hand. Come, let us worship. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For He is our God. For He. the sheep of his hand. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep. the sheep of his hand. For he is our God. For he the sheep of his hand. Amen. Hallelujah. We put ourselves in your hands, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. For those that are joining us on YouTube, I pray that you will sense the presence of God. Hallelujah. May the Lord touch you. May the Spirit of God minister unto your heart. Because what we must have more than anything, church, is the presence of God. Amen. Church can be a boring place without the presence of the Lord. God doesn't want you to fall back into a yoke of bondage. He wants you to know his presence, to know his voice, to know his spirit, to know his ways, to know his word, to know the liberty and the freedom that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. Freedom, listen to this, to worship. Freedom to pray. Praise God. I can take it to the Lord. I don't have to even go to a preacher or a priest. I can go right to the Lord. In other words, I can come into his very presence anytime, any place. In my house, at work, in my office, driving down the road in my car, wherever it might be. Thank God the Lord can come and visit you and show his realness and his love and his presence. Amen. So I pray from your heart tonight that you'll just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. That you'll say, God, I want you. I hunger for you. I long to be in your presence. How about that, church? I long to be in your presence. Praise God. Hallelujah. Feel that tonight. Glory. Amen. In your presence. In your presence. That's where I am strong. In your presence. Oh, Lord. That's where I belong, seeking your face, touching your grace, in the cleft of the rock, hallelujah, in your presence. Sing that with us now. Come into his presence tonight. In your presence. Come into the presence of God. In your, that's it. That's what we must have. The presence of the Lord. Lord my God. In your presence. That's where I belong. Seeking your face, touching your grace, in the cleft of the rock, in your presence. Sing it again from the top. Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. In your presence. That's where I am strong in your presence. Oh, Lord, my God, in your presence. That's where I belong, seeking your face, touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh God, seeking your face, amen. Seeking your face, touching your grace, in the cleft. Of the rock in your presence, oh God, amen. Hallelujah, church. You are his children. Cry out to the Lord, cry out to your God, amen. 
You are his children. You are saved by grace through faith. Come into the very presence of the Lord, presence of God, because that's what's going to help you. That's what's going to strengthen you. That's what's going to empower you. That's what's going to revive you. That's what's going to renew you. That's what's going to draw your heart unto him will be the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praying this week, I was praying, asking the Lord for answers. Asking him, just praying about the church and praying about the body of Christ. And, and I felt like the Lord was speaking to my heart. And I said, Lord, what is it that we must have? What is it that we need? What is it that we need to do? And the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and God said this, you must have my presence. That's it. You have got to have my presence. Hallelujah. You can have all the bells and whistles. You can have all the things the modern church has today. But listen to me. You can't make up the presence of God. Either you have it or you don't. There is nothing else that can make up the presence of God. I know the devil has a copycat cat, but it's not the real thing. There's nothing else that can make up the presence of God. You know, you know what will cause the presence of God to come into this house? Number one, when you keep it right, when you keep it straight, when you preach the truth of the Word of God. Number two, when your hearts are hungry for God, when you want to meet the Lord, when you desire to meet with God, when you desire to come into His presence, when you come in faith, you come believing God. I believe the Lord will show up in His presence. You know the qualifications that it takes? It's not a degree. No. It's not 10 years of Bible college. No. It's a heart that is hungry for God. Listen, how long have you been saved? Are you still hungry for the Lord? Are you hungry for Jesus? Are you hungry for His presence? That's what we must have. Hearts that want. Hearts that desire. Isn't that right, Brother Scott? Hearts that are hungry for God. Desiring the Lord. The church, listen, nobody else can manufacture the presence of God. Word of life can't do it either. Either you have them or you don't. Either you're hungry or you're not. Either you're hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, He's going to vomit you out. Well, don't let them vomit you out. Say, God, I want your presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. One more time, Abuja, from the top. Just sing it. You can be seated if you want to. Just worship the Lord. I want you to relax. Amen. In his presence. That's where I am strong in your presence. Oh, Lord, my God, in your presence. That's where I belong. Seeking your face. Seeking your face. Touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock. In your presence. Oh, God. Isn't that God good? In the Lord good, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. So glad to have Sister Mona with us tonight. Amen. Lord is good. Amen. We're going to pray for her at the end of the service tonight. Sister Barb as well. God bless you. God bless you. Good to have you folks. Praise God. Amen. Brother Tim has been sick too. He's feeling a little bit better, so I'm glad about that too. Amen. Praise God. Good to have you folks. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hey, young man, young lady, I got something for you. Right here where my heart is. So don't leave after service. Make sure I get it to you, okay? All right? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Praise the Lord. Appreciate her coming. Amen. And I was going to just play the guitar tonight, try my best to play the guitar. Abby says, I'll be there quarter quarter two. I said, okay, all right. Praise God. I was going to give her the night off. She is so dedicated. You know that? Dedicated. I appreciate it so very much. You wouldn't believe it. A hard worker and dedicated to the Lord and to the work of the Lord. So praise God. Amen. Praise God. Sure is quiet tonight without kids running, 80 kids running everywhere. You know that? Praise God. I mean, I tell you, I love these kids. I really do. But I tell you what, it's not bad having a night off from time to time. And uh, amen. My teachers say amen. Listen, if you're here tonight, our teachers, God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate you coming and your desire for the word of the Lord. I know you probably are tired, but uh, we all are. You know, I'm tired too in the flesh. But in my spirit, I'm saying, Oscar, I want more. That's what I feel like. I want more. I want more. I hunger for more. I desire more. Okay? Amen. He's the one that comforts us. He's the one that helps us in our hurting, in our grief, in our mourning. Right? He's the one that helps us. Sister Terry, we love you. We love you. But you know he loves you more than us, and we love you a lot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, amen. Praise God. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just want you to know that even though you may feel like it, you're not alone. You're not alone. And so she's here tonight with her church family. You know that? Praise God. And so I, I'm proud of you. Wasn't expecting you tonight, but I'm glad you came. I really am. So God bless you. Praise the Lord. And it's just good to be in God's house. Amen. It is good to be in God's house. Listen, I got a, a couple things uh, tonight before we leave. I definitely want to pray for Sister Mana. And uh, Sister Mana, you're looking so much better than when I saw you Sunday. So I'm very glad, very thankful. You keep it up. You keep eating, okay? And you keep it up. Now, she's going to have some more tests run, but she's got an artery in her neck that's clogged up. Well, we need the Holy Ghost, the Rotor Rooter, to go in there and unclog that artery. And believe, how many believe in God of miracles? Amen. I want to I must get back to praying for miracles, okay? Believe in God for miracles, right? Amen. Not just praying, but actually believing God and grab a hold of him as a garment, believing God for miracles, okay? Amen. Uh, so we have a few needs like that tonight. So remember that. Um, my wife is doing better. Praise God. I just want you all to know that. Praise God. Hallelujah. She's having better days. Today's a good day, huh, honey? Today's a good day. So uh, just continue to pray for her. Just want you to know your prayers are helping, so praise God, okay? Um, also, uh, continue to pray for Jason Mills. That's Sister Barb's son-in-law, and he's down at Riverside. So his heart stopped a couple times um, because of another illness that he has, but just it affects his heart. So we're going to pray for him. The God that can raise the dead is the God that can heal Jason or anybody else, okay? So remember that, okay? Kevin Little has shingles. I think they're on his face. So pray for him, okay? This is painful, and he's not feeling well. So lift him up before the Lord here tonight as well, okay? Let me just say a couple things. I want to make a great announcement tonight. Uh, of course, this Wednesday, if you have your shoebox, drop it off here at the church, or unless you plan on going over there to the skating ring tomorrow, it's from 6 to 8 o'clock. They usually don't let you in, you know, too much earlier than that. But if you can meet us there, we do need help. We uh, we appreciate it so much. Uh, two of my teachers won't be able to be there tomorrow. So if you can be there to help us to put shoes on, to put skates on, to put shoes back on, to help these kids find their coach jackets and things like that, and to keep them from tearing each other up, okay? Hey, Amen. No, they're usually pretty good. Uh, we'd appreciate it so very much. We, we do things like serving them pizza, water, making sure they stay in the place where they can eat, and they eat there, and then also uh, help them with the Christmas gifts and packages and then clean up. There's a big part in clean up. So we really would appreciate your help if all possible, okay? Uh, but tonight's the night to bring the shoebox or bring it tomorrow if you're going to be there, okay? As I said, tomorrow from 6 to 8 uh, at Zoomers. And uh, all my bus drivers, van drivers, let's meet here at the church at 5 o'clock. Would that be okay? 5 o'clock, good enough? Let's meet here at 5. Let's make sure we have our ducks in a row. Everybody is here. And then we can take off from here, go pick up the kids and meet at Zoomers, okay? And then also, don't forget to bring the kids home when it's all done. Those two hours go very fast. They fly by, okay? Um, also, if you want to, for the Kids for Christ Ministries, you can wear your T-shirt or wear your sweatshirt, or if you want to wear a Christmas sweater, Christmas sweatshirt, that's fine too. You don't have to wear your Kids for Christ t-shirt or, or or sweatshirt, okay? Peanut Butter and Jesus is this Saturday, this Saturday. Sister Jan, do you have enough folks going to help you? Do you have a sign-up sheet? You got to sign up tonight. Well, okay, all right, all right. We're, we need folks to help make peanut butter sandwiches Friday, uh, bags Friday night, and then uh, the peanut butter sandwiches on Saturday, and they go out on Saturday uh, afternoon, okay? So, amen. Sign up sheet on the four-year table, or let Sister Jan know. Text her, message her, whatever it might be. Let her know so she can count on you, okay? Now, this, this Sunday night is the Christmas candlelight service, okay? I'm excited about this. So, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to give you a little debut real quick. I think it's so pretty because um, I want you to notice that we have a brand new cross back here. Isn't that beautiful? Brother Larry Hollenball built that from scratch, made that, and him and Brother Tim put it up here today. So, Sister Marsha, turn off both lights in the back there, if you don't mind. And I just want you to look at how pretty it's going to look this, uh, this Sunday night. I mean, look at this. This is going to be beautiful. Look at this. Isn't this pretty? Oh, hallelujah. With all the decorations and the cross, isn't that beautiful? And so I just, I, I am very, very uh, pleased with this. And so Brother Larry is going to come in just a moment, and he's going to share a little bit about this. And, uh, but um, anyway, so this Sunday, invite family and friends to come Sunday night, 630. Again, we're going to have uh, barbecued uh, pulled pork. We're going to have chicken sandwiches, and we're going to have cookies and coffee and punch afterwards. Great time of singing, specials, singing Christmas hymns. 
the works, okay? Celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I would love to see a full sanctuary of people coming to worship Jesus, not gifts. Worship the gift, Jesus Christ, okay? We're not worshiping the tree. We're not worshiping festivities. We're worshiping Christ. It's about Christ. We elevate Christ. We lift up the name of Jesus. We exalt the King of kings and Lord of lords, and not only the coming king, but the coming king again. Amen. Praise God. So we will be doing that this Sunday, okay? Um, all right. Today is Brian and Jamie Rife's anniversary, wedding anniversary. Uh, Brother Leroy and Georgie their Chandler, yesterday was theirs. Happy anniversary yesterday. Amen. And uh, Brian and Jamie, happy anniversary today. I am very excited. I, I love this. If you have an offering, just leave it in the basket or in the box here or give on, give LaFi, whatever you want to do. Thank you so much, okay? But I went to Brother Larry, and he's a craftsman, okay? He is a craftsman. There's a difference. There's a difference between really somewhat of a carpenter and a craftsman and a construction worker. There's just different. And, and uh, a, a craftsman is very, very detailed in his work. And uh, I brought Brother Larry a picture off of Google, a picture of a cross. And I said, Brother Larry... Could you make this for us? And he said, well, sure I can. I said, really? You can still do this? He said, yes, I can. I said, okay. So uh, we uh, talked about the details, talked about the kind of wood to use. I told him what I wanted. I wanted it to protrude like a, like to, to, like a 3D. And he did it. He did it. Isn't that beautiful? And I said, I wanted it to be in, uh, 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 what, what's the color of the, it's the, uh, the not, yeah, but the color of the wood. It's the dark, the dark wood. No, it's the dark wood. Yeah, yeah, walnut. That's it, the walnut color. I wanted the walnut, and, uh, and he did it. So it's beautiful, and he put lights on the back of it and everything. So, um, And after they all said and done, he's got like $400 wrapped up in this, they donated it to the church, donated under the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That didn't include his time. That's not the time. That's just the, that's just the material. So, Brother Larry, come on up here. He wants to say a few words tonight, okay? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Use this mic, okay? All right, there you go. <laughs> okay. Let's have a word of prayer first. Lord Father, we thank you that this is possible because of you. That we can stand in the presence of you and glorify your holy name. And we thank you for all that's done in this church. We thank you for the children. We ask you to continue to bless them. Yes. And, Lord, we just thank you in your precious holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you something that happened Sunday, Sunday night that the pastor come to me and he said, how much time do you need? I said, oh, about an hour and a half. And a look on his face. <laughs> and then he said, really, how much time you need? I said, oh, maybe an hour. <laughs> well, anyway, it boiled down to 10 minutes. <laughs> and here I thought he was talking about how much time it would take to put that up. <laughs> so, but anyway... I just want to tell you about the cross. What a privilege it is to be here in this church and do this for this congregation. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody and the support that you give me. I just uh, uh, want to tell you that the shop that we have is just tremendous. We got all the woodworking tools that we need. And uh, my son helps me do things, and I help him, and what a blessing it is. But God is behind it all. And he gave me the talent and gave me the opportunity to do this. I want to tell you something about the cross. At the bottom of the cross, there's a door. And as you go to the door, go up this narrow path over all kind of obstacles. 
you run into. And as you get to the cross, there's one thing about that door. You have to get down on your knees to go through. And you have to praise God for it. But this cross, Christ went and hung upon this cross that you and I would be covered with the blood of Christ and the redemption. And Christ did it all. It's none of us. It's Christ Jesus. And I want to tell you, God has blessed me with this. I've made, I, I've made many a, a crosses. And God has always helped me through this. No matter what I run into, God helped me to resolve it. And I want to just thank my wife for allowing me to go and do these things. And, and what a blessing she is to me. And uh, I, just, I just think as God hung upon it on the cross, that God said at, at the end, he, he said, it is finished. He completed everything upon that cross. And there isn't anything that he didn't do. It's all laid upon that cross for you and I. And I just want to tell you that when he said it's finished, it's finished. He prepared everything for us. The healing is there. Yes. Amen. And, and that if we as people come to realize that the healing's there, all we have to do is cry out to him for what's ailing us and come to the to realization that Jesus Christ did it. And, and I thank God. I thank God that we can go to him and cry out and say, God, I've got this in my body. I want it out of here in the name of Jesus. And it's, it can be gone. So we got to realize that as we as a church and stand here, that Jesus Christ is all about him, nothing else. Amen. And I just praise the Lord yes. Jesus for all. Yes. And I'm so privileged to be here Amen. because Amen. God called me here. Yes. And I thank God for it. Amen. I thank God for our Pastor Mark. I thank it for Tim to help me today. What a blessing. What a blessing. And I want, I just want you to know, have any of you seen a miracle? Huh? If you haven't seen a miracle, look at yourself in a mirror. Because God said that we are made wonderful, that we are the children of God. And nobody can take that away from us. I just, I just thank all of you. Well, I didn't take an hour and a half, but anyway, I just want to praise God for every one of you. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Love you, brother. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to see uh, here that uh, he started an offer here to uh, the, your left, the maple wood. He brought me to the shop. Pouring down rain on a Friday. He brought me to the shop. We started with that. And I uh, took a picture of that. Then, I, then I, he showed me the cross. It wasn't quite finished yet. 
I said, take it, stand right there, Brother Larry, I want to take a picture of that. And then today, them hanging it up, and then the final product right here. I thought, wonderful job. Wonderful. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Fantastic. Amen. Very good. And yes, you are looking at a miracle, aren't you? You really are. Each, each and every one of you are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Larry. And, uh, and then the next project, he's already got another project, <laughs> which I can't wait for this. But after the new year, uh, he's going to take this, uh, this old pulpit and he's going to fix her up. He's going to put a little TLC into it so he can bring it to the shop. And he's going to do some work on it as well. And uh, that pulpit started with us. I actually have a pulpit downstairs that started with us. Remember that? Sister Orly, you remember that collapsed portable pulpit? <laughs> he couldn't push on it. It's downstairs. I tell you right now, you'll fall over on that one. But this one here, my wife picked up in a, uh, I don't know, antique shop or something like that for like $130, I think. It's been in a flood. There's a water line there, water mark. But uh, you see that water mark there? But nonetheless, I've, I've preached out of that for years. And, uh, oh, I imagine, you know, all the messages that pulpit has heard. Uh, praise God. Hey, in the Bible, if you would, uh, uh, I just tore my page out, Lord. Away it goes. Uh, praise God. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy and chapter 2 and verse 16, all Scripture, can you say all Scripture, all scripture. is given by inspiration of God. I mean, is God breathed? Amen. 1,500 years here. To the totality of written of the entirety of the Bible, 1,500 years, and is profitable for what? For doctrine, correct teaching. Doctrine, how many know doctrine is important? <laughs> People that give up their doctrine, I don't know about that. Doctrine is important. We're going to adhere to the scriptures, adhere to the word of God. Not what man says, not dead religion, but I want to know what the word of the Lord, what does God breathe have to say to us, okay? For reproof and for correction. It reproves us when we do wrong, corrects us when we, when we get out of alignment. For instruction and in righteousness, it tells us how to live, right? How to live this life. That the man of God may be what? Complete. So God's got us on a journey, and God is trying to sanctify us. He is sanctifying us, and he is, he is teaching us. And, uh, and then it says, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so he's maturing us, may grow, develop, and mature as a child of God, as a Christian, as we follow the Lord. Amen. All right. Tonight, we're going to be uh, in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 11. You can turn there in the Bible. Now, uh, our teachers that are normally with our kids on Wednesday night, so we're, you know, this is WLBI. Of course, you know this. And uh, you say, well, Pastor, I haven't been, you know, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're doing. That's okay. That's all right. Amen. Because the Word of God is the Word of God, and you'll get something out of this tonight. Amen. Heavenly Father, pray for the grace of God to minister thy word tonight. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. Lord, I pray for the anointing, the unction, the power of thy spirit to minister thy word, to teach it, Father, correctly. And I pray for hearts and ears to be attentive and desiring to learn. Lord, we thank you, Father. We praise you. Anoint the body of Christ as well, giving you glory and honor. We ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before we go any further, I do want to say that uh, Tyra's mom uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Tyra uh, talked to her mom more. That was on Sunday morning, amen. I, I don't know if, if you felt it, but it seemed like, I don't know, the church seemed to be somewhat, I don't know, I couldn't tell what kind of mood you were in Sunday morning. I couldn't tell, but man, I would preach anyway. I was ready. We're going to preach anyway. And yet somebody heard the word of God, and they said, that pastor was on fire. And, uh, and Tyra says, well, Mom, he's always like that. She says, no, there was something different about this. I'll tell you what was different about that. God was already working on her heart, amen. It didn't matter what I preached. God was working on her heart. So you pray for Tyra's mom, amen. You pray for her. You pray that she'll continue this journey with the Lord, but it's just a miracle, and I give God all the praise and the glory. Now, last week, if you remember any of these, see if you can answer these questions. Even if you weren't here and you were teaching kids, you can try to answer these questions. Jo Jehoiada was the high priest. True or false? True. Jehoiada is the high priest, chapter 11. What was Jehoiada's wife's name? Jehoshaphat. Uh, Jehoshaphat. I've heard Jehoshaphat. I've been saying Jehoshaphat, however you want to say that. Jehoshaphat, but, uh, or Jehoshaphat, however, whatever suits you. What's the name of the baby boy that was hidden? Joash. Very good. And we've seen his name spelled differently in the Bible, Jehoash or Joash. Um, how many years was Joash hidden for? Six years. He was seven years old when they revealed him, but six years. That's right. He was one year old when they hid him. Um, where was Joash hidden? In the temple, correct. And where in the temple? In one of the what? Bedchamber rooms, one of the rooms in the temple. Very good. And it's just a miracle in itself that you're going to hide a one-year-old up until he's seven years old in a temple. 
My wife said, well, the temple's a big place, I know, but yeah, but kids cry, and kids like to run, and kids have all kinds of energy, you know? So I think that the Lord hid him from Athaliah. I do, amen? And we know Athaliah was a great queen, wasn't she? She was really good. She loved the Lord, and she cared for the people. No, uh uh-uh. What was the name of the evil queen who killed her kin? What What was her name? Oh, very good. That's your question. Huh? Athaliah. Amen. Wait a minute. You're just talking about it. Athaliah is correct. Was Joash the last remaining descendant of David? Yes. Jehosheba is seen as having faith and courage to save Joash. True. Who is the one behind the scenes trying to destroy David's bloodline? Satan. That's right. So although uh, uh, Athaliah is doing this and carrying out this, this evilest, uh, murderous tyrant, tyrant uh, we, see, we know that Satan is behind this, okay? What obvious event will happen before the rapture of the church? Before the rapture of the church. Fallen away is correct. The apostasy, they've fallen away. Do you think we're coming into that time now? I think we have been for the past several decades, okay? I think it's getting worse and worse. Or else this place would be full tonight. And we'd have overflow. You know that? Because people are just hungry for the Lord. Not because of anything special. He's special. We lift up Christ. That ought to be enough. Jesus ought to be enough. To be able to come and hunger and desire, everything else is put aside. There must be a time when businesses and shops were closed at 12 o'clock on Wednesday so they could go home and get ready for church. You know that? It's not like that these days anymore. Now they have... Your, your businesses, and you have, you have, you have, you have, you, not only that, but you've got, what else? You've got sports, sports, yeah, all that kind of thing. Okay. Um, there was a time the church, well, never mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me get on with this. Who is the man of sin or the son of perdition? The man of sin or the son of perdition? We talked about this last week. Yeah, he's the Antichrist. The Antichrist. We talked about all this. We went through this. You can look back last week's lesson. You can see uh, who is it that wants to be as God? Satan is correct. Lucifer, Satan. Yep. In the last days, many will have itching ears. True or false? True. Um, There will be those who will turn away from the truth. True. What will Satan do in the middle of the tribulation? Set himself up in the temple and, and claim to be God and to be worshiped as God. That's correct. It's a fight for the throne, and Satan fights for the throne of your heart. True or false? True. Lucifer was cast out of heaven because he was humble. False. What was he full of? Pride. Lifted up in who? Himself, right? How many angels were cast out of heaven also with him? One third is correct. Who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? Joshua is correct. What will Jesus do to lukewarm people? Vomit them, him out of his mouth, right? Uh, what happens when salt loses its flavor? It's thrown out, trodden over. It is useless, right? Correct. Everything you said tonight was right. Last question tonight. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and what? Okay, praise God. All right. So these are some of the things we went over last week. We taught about last week. Uh, give me a few minutes tonight, okay? In saving Joash, God has seen moving in the events in order to fulfill, to fulfill his promise to David. Remember the covenant promise to David that his family would rule over God's people forever, okay? So, of course, this was a promise that was ultimately fulfilled by the Son of God himself, our heavenly David, praise God. We know that Jesus will come and rule and reign, amen, once again. And we will rule and reign with him as well. A woman by the name of Jeho- Jehoshaphat was the one who had the courage to step up and to save the baby Joash. Thank God for the Jehoshaphas of today that are that are godly women that love the Lord, that are willing to be used of God to reach the lost, to reach the dying, to reach the hurting. This took great faith. It took great care, courage on Jehoshaphat's part to do something about it. Okay, so what did she do? She risked her life. She knew she could be killed for doing this, but she did it anyway. Amen. God used her. See, there are talkers and there are walkers and And there are people who always talk about doing something for God, but they never do. But then there are others who see the opportunity to work for the Lord, and they step in, they step up, and they get the job done. Thank God for those kind of people. That's the kind of people we want at Word of Life Christian Center that will get their hands dirty, so to speak, that will work and labor for the kingdom of God. Use your life and live your life for God. Thank God for the Jehoshaphat that didn't just sit there and do nothing. She saw what Athaliah was doing. 
knowing. She saw the need. She saw the opportunity to do something about it. So she did. She rescued Joash from being destroyed by Satan. That's right, Satan. He's the one behind this whole scheme to destroy the bloodline of David. And ultimately, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Satan is ever trying to destroy Christ in you. He doesn't want you serving God. He doesn't want your light to shine. And he doesn't want you spreading salt. Amen. So the last thing the devil wants for you to do is to be like a Jehoshaphat that's rescuing people from their sin and the sin of destruction. He doesn't want you teaching souls and bringing people to salvation. He doesn't want you teaching children. He doesn't want you to deposit something of God into them. Satan is like Athaliah and vice versa. Going about trying to destroy lives. And he wants them to end up in a destructive law and dying hell. Understand the mission. Understand. Keep it spiritual. What is happening? What we are up against? What we are fighting against? Even in this church, Amen. Satan wants to stop. Doesn't want us reaching the Joashes. Doesn't want us reaching children. Doesn't want us to deposit something of God in them. Doesn't want you teach them about Jesus or the Bible or God's purpose of their life or salvation. You understand the fight, and Satan is fighting harder and harder and harder. We know it's war. We know it's a fight for the soul. We understand that. But the Bible said that we are to contend for the faith. We are to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Many souls need saving. Lives need changing. And many people are on the path of the Athaliahs of today that want to bring destruction to their lives. But by the grace of God, we will be a Jehoshaphat for the Lord, amen, for the Lord, praise God. All right, so, uh, so let's be like a Jehoshaphat. Let's be like one that, that stepped up, that stepped in and uh, take the initiative and uh, like her and uh, who saved the bloodline to David's throne and ultimately the Messiah. How incredible. Now think about this. The devil lost again. It got close, got down to one left. In the bloodline, one left ultimately. Now, Athaliah didn't know this, but Satan knew this as he was using her as an instrument to destroy the bloodline and the kin of David, her kin, those who had a right to the throne, okay, the rightful position to the throne because she wanted it for herself. She did it out of greed, out of meanness, out of spite. You see the, uh, you kind of see the genealogy there. But, um, but understand it was Satan behind this whole scheme trying to destroy the bloodline to David. Amen. So I pray that we will step up. We will have the courage to help and to save the lost, to win souls to Jesus. Let us talk about the Lord. Let us lift up the name of Jesus. Share your faith. Tell them about the Lord. Invite them to church. Amen. Praise God. Win souls to Christ. Uh, reach people that are dying in their sins with the gospel. James said this, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the air of his ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Jehoshaphat was married to the high priest. In chapter 11, 2 Kings, his name is Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the high priest. Jehoshaphat was also the daughter of King Jehoram who had married Athaliah. So, Brother John, if you can... Oh, go back just a little bit, can you? I don't know if you can or not, but um, the genealogy, you can kind of see there how it all ties together. Here's the high priest, that's Jehoiada, and, that's, and he is married to Jehoshaphat, who was the daughter of King Jehoram. King Jehoram was the son of King Jehoshaphat. King Jehoram married Queen Athaliah, who was the daughter of of Queen Isabel, uh, Jezebel, Isabel, I'm going to be in trouble for that, Jezebel and King Ahab, <laughs> amen, my daughter-in-law is great, my daughter's awesome, okay, amen, Lord have mercy, scratch that, amen, <laughs> me and my tongue-tied self, right, but you kind of get the idea there of how it's all tied together there in the, uh, the dynasty of things, okay, so Jehoshaphat uh, would know about Athaliah, she would know how evil she was, she would know how corrupt that she was, she would have access to the royal palace and would be able to see secretly grabbed the baby Joash to save his life. Knowing her godly heart, God used Jehoshaphat to save the royal bloodline of David so that the promise of the coming Savior and King might be fulfilled. Being wife of the high priest Jehoiada, Jehoshaphat was able to secretly hide Joash, who was just a baby, one years old at the time, in the temple. He was hidden in a room or a bedchamber for six years. Now, I want to 
as I made the point earlier, I want to make the point again that that is a miracle in itself. The fact that you can hide a child that long in the temple, in the palace there, God protected them from the enemy from the Antichrist, from Satan himself, praise God. So, amen. I tell you, thank God. 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 2 and 3. And they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom from Athaliah so that he was not killed. So he was hidden with her in the house of the Lord for six years while Athaliah reigned over the land. Tell me another child that was also hidden and was not killed. Amen. Tell me another child. Moses is correct. Moses is right. Tell me another child that was hidden and was not killed. Another child. Jesus is correct. I say, we're coming up on Christmas here. Jesus. Remember the, the, the Spirit of God woke uh, Joseph up and told him, go to where? Go to Egypt, all right, until Herod dies, okay? That's right. So notice, t t uh, t uh, t uh, this takes, take, uh, uh, notice that although Joash was hidden from being killed by Athaliah, he was raised up. Notice this. He was raised up in the temple of God for six years by the high priest, and his wife. Now, I cannot express to you the importance of raising your children up in the ways of God. I want you to notice the Bible says this, and you fathers, look at this. It says in Ephesians 5.14, and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up. Can you say bring them up? That's the difference here. This is something that, that men are faltering to do this day. But bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. In other words, help them, lead them, guide them, give them guidance, give them direction in the word, in the ways of the Lord. Teach them about Jesus. Teach them about the Lord. Teach them about God. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, I train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The train up gives us the idea of plant the word of God into them. Don't just bring them to church, but bring church home to them. You got to live the life with them. You don't just talk about God once in a while. He is your life. He's your conversation. Amen. You pray for them. You help them. You encourage them. You raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. You bring them up. It's a lifestyle. It's living a life of faith. It's living this godly life in your home, at work, at school. It's Christ. Christ is your life. You pray with them, as I said. You teach them the scripture. Spend time with them on a continual basis. No wonder Joash had a heart for God. Raised up this way. Raised up under Jehoiada. Raised up under Jehoshaphat. Raised up in the temple of God. No wonder he had a heart for the Lord. In other words, see the difference here. He was raised up in the temple of God. What am I talking about? They raised him up in church. Let me tell you, church makes a difference. God established the gathering of the saints together. Amen. To worship the Lord. And we are not to forsake ourselves from the assembling together as the manner of some have. So I'm going to tell you something. Bringing your kids to church is important. Amen. You say you're a Christian family. Where are your children? Where are your kids? Amen. Where are you? Sometimes I want to say that. Well, what about this? And you wonder why. Maybe you're having trouble. Why? Now, I know it's a choice when you get older. I realize that. But this is very, very important. I want you to notice something here. He was taught about the Lord, the ways of God. That's right, the law of God, the will of God, the statutes of God. He was raised up in the presence of the Lord, church. He was raised up in church. Therefore, we notice here that he had a heart. Joash had a heart for God. The Bible says this. It says this. Then Jehoash became king. Notice this in verse 12, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 of 2 Kings. I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. And did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoiada, the priest, instructed him. Now, we'll talk about that a little bit later when we come to chapter 12. But as long as Jehoiada was instructing him, and how many know teaching is correct? Being taught the word of God, taught the Bible, preached the word of God. The truth will help us and how to live righteously before the Lord. Helps us to know what the will of God is for us. What's going on with children today? Why are they running wild? Why are they out of control? Because parents no longer are of the faith. They're not bringing their children to church. They're not talking about the Lord. They're not talking about Jesus. And so there are all, no instructions or boundaries or guidance from the Lord. And they do their own thing. Okay, can I talk about that on Sunday night? Jehoiada invested into Joash. Think about this, for six years, just in this part. He did, it, he did it more than that, but just in the first foundational part of his life. The first six years, 
They invested into him and taught him the word of God, taught him the law of God, the law of Moses. The, 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 taught him the word of the Lord, the instruction of God, the, the, the instruction of righteousness. They taught him. They taught Joash about God. And folks, I want to say, teach your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren about Jesus. Let them see Jesus in you. And that's what's going to speak to them. They need to see that you have a true living relationship with God, that you know God, that God is your Savior. And you talk about the Lord because you love God. He's everything to you. Amen. And so let them see Jesus in you. Let them see that salt in you. Let them see that light in you. Let them see Jesus in your conversation. Let them see Jesus and how you treat people, how you treat your wife, how you treat your husband, how you treat your children, how you treat one another. Amen. Let them see Christ in you. People can talk about Jesus, but let them see the Lord in your life. Amen. Let them see. Let Teach them about the Bible. Instruct them in the ways of righteousness. It, it made a difference in Joash. And, uh, and kids are being destroyed today by the devil and by the world and by every demon in hell because they're not being taught what it means to have faith in God. Uh, so now these days, uh, what's raising up our children, it's YouTube. Uh, what's raising up our children, it's TikTok. Uh, what's raising up our children, it's Facebook. Uh, what's raising up our children, it's Snapchat. And all these other social medias are raising up our kids. It's a slew of sludge that our children have access to. Parents have no, no guidelines, apparently. And these kids can get into all this and see all the filth and the sludge and the sin of the world and it affects them. It robs them of their innocence. Amen. All right, they're being destroyed. The innocence of their heart and souls are being destroyed. Satan is going after children. It's been this way ever since the beginning because why? Because Jesus came in a form of a babe. From the very beginning, it's been Satan destroying children, destroying babies because Satan, uh, because Jesus came in the form of a babe. I want to take you to Revelation chapter 12. It's not on the monitor. You'll just have to uh, open your Bibles tonight. Revelation chapter 12. And uh, let me take you to, well, if I can find it myself. Uh, look at verse uh, 3. Talking about the, I believe this is a, is a reference to the coming of the Messiah. Chapter 12 and verse, uh, look at verse 3. And uh, I'll read through verse 5, chapter 12, Revelation. And it says, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, that's Satan, okay, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head, heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. Okay, so we're talking about being rebellion and rebellion against God cast out of heaven and threw them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman. Now, I, I know there are different interpretations, but I believe this can also refer to Mary, okay, who was ready to give birth to devour her child. Now, the word child in, in, my, in the, my Bible is capitalized, referring to Christ as soon as it was born. So it was a fight in the heavenlies. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. And so I, I can see how from the very beginning that Satan, even way back in the time of Moses and even before that, that, that wants to destroy children because he knew the Messiah was going to come in a form of a babe. Okay, now, now you, you might have your own thoughts on this or whatever, but it's all, notice these children today. It's been a fight for their soul, even today. Look at the children today and all the things that are taking place and the human trafficking and all this kind of thing. And even Satan behind the scenes in the airwaves trying to destroy their soul and the innocence of their heart, trying to bring them to a lost and a dying hell. And that's why we are trying so hard to reach these children and tell them about Jesus. And it is a fight. It is a struggle. It's a spiritual battle. And this church has to be spiritually alert and awake and understand what we are up against. This whole thing is spiritual. Satan wants to destroy your children. Don't let the devil raise them up. Don't let the world raise them up. Don't let China raise them up. Don't let the ways of, of sin raise them up. You raise them up and you raise them up on God and you better get those children to church. Bring them to church. You ought to have them in Sunday school every time our doors are open. You ought to have them in every children's ministry that we have in this church. Raise them up in God. Tell them about the Lord. 
Lord. Amen. Show them Christ and talk of Christ and talk of the ways of the Lord and the word of God and how to live this life for the Lord and how to have, how to have a personal loving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, if he could have, he would have killed Joash. I know that. But thank God that there's someone willing to act and do something about it. Jehoshaphat did something about it. She didn't let fear stop her. Amen. She boldly reacted and a baby was saved from being aborted. What do you think all this is about abortion? Health rights? Women's rights? No. The whole thing is Satan, just like in the Bible, wanting to kill Moses, wanting to kill jo Joash, wanting to kill Jesus. It's the same antichrist, devilish, demonic, evil, wicked spirit. It's the same thing. And I don't know why we as the church are not getting it. I'm not talking about just word of life, but not getting it. We understand this thing. Listen, I, I understand. You can, listen, you can, have, you can pick it all you want, do all the marches that you want, but unless you are praying and tapping on heaven's door, unless you are seeking, unless you are seeking God, unless you are praying, understanding the spiritual implication here that this is a spiritual battle. It is war beyond war. It is warfare. It is warfare. Amen. When Satan, when the Antichrist has a certain amount of liberty on this earth for seven years of the wrath and judgment of God upon the wicked and the ungodly, uh, two-thirds of the earth's population will be murdered, will be killed, will be destroyed. Satan has been a murderer from the very beginning, okay? And so don't think he's going to stop uh, after Joash or after Jesus. He is after the children today, okay? I hope we understand that. Look at Moses, as we mentioned earlier. His mother his mother took a, a brave step uh, of faith to save him from Pharaoh, hid him, amen? And then God used Moses mightily to save uh, the people of God. His mother uh, uh, deposited enough of faith and God into him that Moses, Moses must serve God. He must serve God. Hallelujah. You can have all the riches of Pharaoh, have all the riches of Egypt, have all the power of the palace, but give me Jesus. That's what Moses said. Give me God. Hallelujah. And Moses forsook it all, but he gained everything because he gave his all to Jesus. Amen. He surrendered to the Lord. We need Christians today that will rise up and do something about it. How about it? That's what I'm trying to say. Amen. Praise God. Like our brother told me the other day, I believe it was yesterday, he said the people of this church need to get up and get behind this pastor and what he, God has shown him and the vision that God has given him. Amen. Praise God, folks. We got to see and understand what is going on. Just be faithful. Bring your kids to Sunday school. Bring them to church. Raise them up in a godly home and environment. Pray with them. Have devotions with them. Read the Bible together. Teach them the word of God. Live it before them. That's what makes a difference. Don't let the world do it. Don't let somebody else do it. You do it. You be a Jehoshaphat and a Jehoiada. It's people like this that make a difference. On Wednesday nights, this church is trying to be a Jehoshaphat. That's what we are. We're trying to be a Jehoshaphat. We're trying to be a Jehoiada. That's what we're doing. We're trying to invest in these kids. We're trying our best. It's hard. It's tough. It's getting harder and harder and harder. And I need more help. I need more people. I need more teachers. I need more support. I need more uh, helpers. I just, it just is. I just, we need more. We need more. I got I double what we got now would be fantastic because people go on vacations or people are sick or things come up, okay? And when one person is out, I can feel it. We feel it. Just one person, just one. Every joint supplies. Everybody has a function, has a part. But I tell you, we really need to pray. What are we trying to be in this church? We're trying to be a Jehoshaphat. We're trying to save these children's souls. We're trying to help them. We're trying to lead them to the path of righteousness. We're trying to tell them about Jesus and the plan of salvation for their life. It's not a small thing. It's not a light thing. It's a heavy thing. It's an important thing that we are doing in this church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We need to do this. We're Jehoiada. We're trying to snatch kids out of the hands of Satan and put something of Christ into them. We're teaching them about God. We're telling them uh, about what the Bible says it's not easy, it's very hard, has many challenges, but we are doing the best that we can to keep them away from the spirit of Athaliah that wants to destroy their souls. That's what it is. We're fighting against the spirit of Athaliah. Amen. We're doing everything we can, but you just stay home and you watch your TV sitting in your lazy chair. You go right ahead. Don't bring your measure of faith. Don't be faithful to God. Why? Why? Athaliah loves you. Athaliah loves you. Why? Why be faithful? Why? Athaliah wants you to stay home. Athaliah doesn't want you to help. Athaliah doesn't want you to pray. Athaliah doesn't want you to support. Athaliah doesn't want you to be faithful. Athaliah says, yeah, let me have them. Let me have them. Let me have them. I'll take care of them. I will take their soul to hell. You just sit there and relax. I'll take their soul. I will take care of them. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. You just let your own lazy self sit in that lazy chair, lazy, chair, lazy boy. 
But we got Jeho Jehoiadas. Thank God we got Jehoiadas. And thank God we got Jehoshaphat that want to do something that will pray. That will step in and step up and risk their lives. Risk their lives. Give their all to save a soul. Praise God. To win a child to God. To invest into them. There are people through the years that have invested into me. I've had teachers. I've had coaches. I've had people that not even saved, but just good moral people that invested into me through the years. And I remember each and every one of them made a difference and an impact in my life and finally brought me to the place of salvation of winning me to Christ. Thank God somebody deposited something of Jesus into me. Thank God somebody told me about Jesus. Thank God someone told me the truth about how to be saved and told me about the gospel and the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the wonderful salvation we have in the Lord. Thank God somebody told me. Listen, I was 27 when I finally got saved, but I did get saved. I did get saved. I did get saved. I did get saved. Did get saved. Somebody invested. Somebody took the time somebody loved me enough to tell me the truth. Praise God. I got saved. Later baptized in the Holy Ghost. And here we are. Reaching children. See, God can take the messes of our life, turn it around, and use it for our good and his glory. God can take a messy situation where, where my biological father was not faithful to my mother, running around with different girls and women. And he took me with him, by the way. I remember some of them. I didn't know at the time, when you're five years old, you don't remember. You don't know who they are. They're just a friend. At five years old, everybody's innocent, right? But looking back, I realized that this is what it was. He was taking me around to his girlfriends. Married, but taking me around to his girlfriends. And he, he was an alcoholic and didn't have much to do with me and so forth. Well, and so God can take a messy situation like that. Then I lost my brother. He got accidentally hit and killed by the neighbor. So I lost my brother. I'm five. I lost my dad. I lost my brother. Just me and mom. And so here, here's a, a, a disastrous situation. And my mom said, my son's not going to grow up to be a sissy. If he isn't going to have a dad, he's not going to grow up to be a sissy. So she puts me into the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts and the Weeblos. Now, they were good back then. No girls allowed at that time, okay? I was in every sport. I was in every event at school. And uh, that's just the way she's she going to raise me up this way, okay? So I had coaches, and I had Weeblos and Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and, and YMCA. I remember the YMCA sleeping outside, camping outside on these outdoor cots, outdoor bunk beds. And you can see thousands and hundreds of thousands of stars under the California skies. I remember this, thinking, wow, it's amazing. Almost like you can reach out and touch them. They seem so close, but they're so far away. But God used all of that. And then at 27, God saved me. And then God baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And then God sent me to Bible college. Got married. Amen. To a wonderful wife. And, uh, and then he called us up to Ohio to work at Bluffton for a couple years. And then God called us to a place I've never heard of in my life called Marion, Ohio, to plant a church. And I've never planted a church in my life. And God says, now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to plant you right in the middle of the inner city where nobody else wants to go. No, all the religious people don't want to go there. We're going to plant you in the middle of the city. Why are you going to do that? Because I'm going to use you all this time. Nothing was by accident. Every person I brought in your path, everything that everybody did for you, what they planted, what they deposited, what they did, I'm going to take that now. I'm going to save you. I'm going to wash you. I'm going to cleanse you. You're going to be born again. You're going to be a child of God. I'm going to plant you in the inner city. You're going to plant a church, start a church, and you're going to do what? You're going to reach children. Amen. It's not by accident. You're going to have a heart for kids. You're going to have a heart for children. That's it. Why? Because people made a difference in my life. Jesus made a difference in my life. You can make a difference in their life, and Jesus makes a difference in their life. Now, I'm a softy. I am. And I told my wife today, I said, now look, or yesterday we were talking about the kids. They got to have their permission slip. I said, I know. I said, but I will not turn a child away tomorrow. A child will not be turned away tomorrow. No. No, they're coming. If they want to come, they're coming. We'll get them there. We'll get them home. But they're coming. Now, they probably won't see this by tomorrow, but they'll see this after tomorrow. <laughs> I can't turn them away. Now, there's some kids we have trouble with, and I, I wish I had another part of the ministry where I can help just 
the kids that are very troubled. I wish I could help them. I wish I had more help where I could take them into a different area with different helpers and teachers maybe just to work more like one-on-one -on -one type of thing. That, that would be great, one-on-one -on -one stuff. I just don't have the capability, okay? I don't have that. So, so I, I, you know, if they're causing too much trouble and it's ruining for everybody else, then, you know, after a year of warnings, <laughs> after they used up their nine lives, we have to say, okay, you can't come back. You can come sit in the sanctuary, but you can't come be a part of these other things because you, you, just, you don't, don't seem to get it. You're ruining it for everybody. So you have, to, you have to discern the difference between what's God and then what's the enemy trying to disrupt what's God. And that's not easy. That's not easy. You have to, you have, I mean, my wife, she knows. I'm going to give them another chance. I'll give them another chance. I'll give them another chance. My wife says, how many more chances are you going to give them? They're disrupting everything. So after about a year, right, Sister Jan, <laughs> about a year, I say, okay, okay. And after I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of them, I said, okay, enough's enough. Okay, and I give them warning. Now, maybe later, maybe later, but right now. But say, I want to reach them all. I don't want to turn anybody away. But I say, you're welcome to come to the sanctuary. Your parents can bring you to church. We just can't pick you up any longer because you will not listen to us at all, and you're ruining it for everybody, okay? But my heart is to reach them all. What is that heart? That's Jehoiada. That's Jehoiada. That's, that's Jehoshaphat. That, that's people. Uh, praise God. Like God wants to use people like you and I to reach these people. That's why we need more people behind this and support this. Amen. Jehoiada comes up with a plan. He, 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 has wasted, uh, he has waited six years, and now the time. Timing is everything. Waiting on the Lord for the right time is so important. And it's important that we don't get ahead of God. Don't be like Abraham and Sarah. Get ahead of God. End up with an Ishmael. We got that problem today. Ishmael, right? So Athali has no idea what's going on. None of this. So for six years, Jehoiada and Jehoshaphat have been keeping Joash, the only surviving heir of David, in concealment, all right, Cog incognito, so to speak. But his debut, his debut of becoming the new king and the rightful king on the throne is about to take place. Now, the plot to secure the throne for David's only surviving heir was planned by the high priest Jehoiada. Now, listen to this. I'm going to talk about something here, and then, and then, and then I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll quit, okay? But first, first of all, I want to say this. Number one, get this, okay? Number one is this. He secured, number one. He secured Jehoiada, the high priest, six years later now. So fast forward now to six years. He secured the allegiance of the temple guards by making them swear an oath of loyalty to the dynasty. Okay? So first of all, he wants, he wants, a, he wants an oath to be sworn by the guards for what he's about to do, okay? Actually, he made them swear the oath in the temple itself, which gave it even more of a sacred meaning, okay? So once they had sworn their allegiance, Joadiah showed them the young descendant of David, the true heir to the throne. And people go like, wow, yes, right, yeah, the rightful heir, the rightful president. Because the one that's in there now is making a mess of things. I'm talking about Athaliah. Just making sure YouTube knows that. Zathaliah. I don't know what you were thinking. Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. And so, and so, Athaliah, she has made a mess over the past six, seven years, and she has brought in Baal worship and idolatry and wickedness and evil and a murderous spirit. And now, here comes you. type of Christ. Mm. <laughs> here comes, here comes one that has a heart for God, one that desires the Lord. Amen. And so secondly, Jehoiada planned a brilliant strategy for the guards to overthrow Queen Athaliah and to place the young boy upon the throne. Now, let me let me read this to you, okay? Let me let me let me you guys okay? Just hold on, okay? So so here it is. Look at verse, verse 4, chapter 11. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds and the bodyguards and the escorts, okay, and brought them into the house of the Lord to him. And he made a covenant with them and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord. That's like going to church, okay? It's like we're going to go to church and we're going to make a, we're going we're gonna to dedicate our hearts and lives to God. We're going to the house of worship. We're going to the house of the Lord, and we're going to dedicate ourselves to the Lord and show them the king's son. So here he is. He's seven years old. Look at this, guys. This is the rightful heir. This is Joash. This is the rightful heir, the bloodline of King David. The covenant promise that God gave David goes to this boy right here, and he's the only one left. What do you think of that? And everybody's going, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're about to have revival. 
we're about, something's about to happen. God's about to move. Heaven's about to open up. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, like, where there was no hope, all of a sudden there's hope. It's like there's just bad news, bad news. Oh, CNN, all the time. I'm sorry, did I say CNN? Did I say CNN? Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, QNN, Queen Athaliah, QNN. <laughs> QNN. Oh, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news all the time. But all of a sudden, here's some good news. Here's a glimpse. Here's some hope. Salvation is on the way. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is in control. God had someone the whole time. It's a, it's a Joash. It's a Samuel. Praise God. God, God, God had this whole thing worked out. He's got a plan. Hallelujah. Devil thinks he's going to win, but he's going to lose. You think the devil's going to win? The devil's going to lose. Hallelujah. He's not going to have your children. He's not going to have your grandchildren. It looks bad. It looks dark. It looks bleak. But God's got a plan. God's got a plan. God's got a plan. Yeah. Yeah. My God's a good God. A mighty God. A powerful God. My God's got a plan. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Huh. <laughs> I want you to see this. I get excited. Look at this. It says, then he commanded them saying, this is what you shall do. Now he says this. One third of you who come on duty on the Sabbath shall be keeping watch over the king's house. So one third of you guards are going to keep ha- look on a watch on the king's house. One third shall be at the gate of Sur. And one third at the gate behind the escorts. You shall keep the watch of the house lest it be broken down. The two contingents of you who go off duty on the Sabbath shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord for the king. <sighs> But you shall surround the king on all sides. Protection. How many know God protects? <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll, you, you, you surround the king on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes with, within range, let him be put to death. If anybody comes near you, you kill him. That's what he says. You are to be with the king as he goes out and as he comes in. Now, now I want to say this. Jehoiada... Who is Jehoiada? Help me out. Who is Jehoiada? He's what? The the high priest. That's right. Jehoiada planned to secure the throne for David's only surviving heir, which is Joash. Jehoiada, along with his wife, Jehoshaphat, we got those names now, right? And the boy's nurse had been hiding Joash for how many years? Six years. Where? In the temple, in church, in the presence of God, learning about God, learning the word of God, learning the laws of Moses. Oh, yeah. He's not just wasting his time. He's not just playing with a Tonka truck. He's playing with the word of God. He's reading. They're telling him about Jesus. Look at this. The first thing that Jehoiada did was to secure the allegiance of the temple guards by making them swear an oath of loyalty to the dynasty. Okay, we said that. Like I said earlier, he made them swear the oath in the temple itself. This gave it even more of a sacred meaning. It's like coming to church and and dedicating your life to the Lord. People might have more reverence to God when they're in the sanctuary. Because I've heard people say this, you know, they'll say things like this. Well, you shouldn't lie. You're in the house of God. Well, it's true you're in the house of God. But the fact is, you shouldn't lie regardless (laughs) if you're in God's house or not, right? So, so, but the people have that kind of that idea. They reverence the sanctuary. And if you're going to sin, don't you sin in the house. Don't you sin in the temple. If you're going to sin, go do it out there. That's the idea. Because they reverence, the Bible says, reverence my sanctuary. In the book of Leviticus, reverence my sanctuary, okay? So once they had, in fact, they wouldn't even kill Athaliah in the sanctuary or in the house of God or in the temple. They took her out. In fact, they took her out the door that they brought horses in. That's a very degrading way to go, all right, so here we go. Okay, so, so once they had sworn their allegiance, Jehoiada showed them the young descendant of David, the true heir of the throne. Joash was the last living descendant of David. The devil almost had it, but then God stepped in, and God's about to make his move. Secondly, Jehoiada planned a brilliant strategy for the guards to overthrow Queen Athaliah and to place the young Joash, seven years old at this time, on the throne. Let me just say this. God is a God of order, not a God of chaos. Jehoiada had a plan. And I want to say this, and I'm going to say it again next week. I'm sure that he thought about this plan over and over and over and over. I'm sure that he prayed over it just about every single day. Jehoshaphat knew about it. Jehoiada knew about it. But I don't think anybody else knew about it. I'm sure that Jehoiada took it to the Lord. I got this feeling that Jehoiada prayed over it, wept over it, sought God over it, until it was time to put it into action. 
I'm going to end it with this. And I'll start it with this next week. I cannot express to you the importance of excellence in the ministry. He didn't do no fly-by-night thing. He wasn't just getting by. I cannot tell you how important it is that we have a spirit of excellency. Doing things right under the Lord and for the glory of God. We might have an old building, but let's make it look nice for the glory of God. Every message, everything that's taught is not a fly-by-night. It is sought over. It is studied. It is scrutinized. I pray over it. I ask God. I take it to the Lord. I pray that God will bless and anoint. I pray that heaven will open. I pray our hearts and ears will be open to receive the word, the truth of Almighty God. I, I, I don't know about you, but I cannot stand when people mishandle the things of God or the spiritual things of God or mishandle the word of God as if to come up here with a nonchalant um, getting by type attitude. No, no. You are important. God is important. What God says is important. So Jehoiada had like six years to plan this. And I think he went over and over and over, making sure that every T was crossed, every I was dotted. Looking at every possibility, just in case something goes wrong. He wanted to make sure that he had it right. Because Jehoiada says to Jehoshaphat, we don't have this in the Bible, but I can imagine. That's his wife. Honey, we got one shot. This is it. It's either do or die. We could die. We could die. But we got one shot. And we better get it right. That's why I feel like in Marion, Ohio, got one shot. We better get it right. Amen? Amen? Yeah. 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 Very, very much so. And I'm telling you, it, it's just, you got to have people you can trust. People that you can count on, people that you can rely on to make things happen. That's why he had to have their allegiance. Now, listen, listen, listen. You, you, you don't worship the pastor, right? You don't do that, right? I'm just a man called of God, trying to fulfill the call of God. I'm not your savior. You know that, right? So we don't worship. The, sometimes people can take it too far. We don't worship pastors. Yeah, but that means you don't respect. See, you can take it too far and say, well, we don't worship him, but... But also, I don't have any respect for you. Well, if you don't have respect for your pastor, I can't teach you. I can't teach you. Now, I'm nothing. I know that. I'm nothing. And you don't worship Jehoiada. You don't worship him. But Jehoiada says, before we get into this thing and before we do this thing, I need your allegiance. I need to know that you're with me. I need to know that you're committed to God. I need to know you're committed to God. Because the covenant of God to David was... It would be an heir on the throne. So Athaliah was, she was a, she was a, a wannabe. She was like self-appointed, okay? She wasn't supposed to be there. She killed everybody else so she can put herself in there, right? I mean, she got a hold of all the voting machines and she, you know, you know about, about 3 o'clock in the morning, she uh, flipped the switch and all of a sudden she got all these, she got all these thousands of votes. Athaliah. I don't know who you're all thinking about. Athaliah. But, um, but no, listen. But for serious, seriously, though. And, uh, and so Jehoiada says, we're not budging until I have your allegiance to God. And I want you to make that dedication right now. Before we can go in the ministry, before we can make a move, before we can make an impact, before we can make a difference, you have got to be committed to God first. Because if you're not committed to God first, you won't even be here half the time. You won't be in church half the time. You'll be hit and miss. You won't come. You'll come with excuses all the time. Yes, you will. Yeah, you will. Because this is not priority. Because God's not priority. The word's not priority. Because God's not priority. His presence's not priority. Because that's not priority. The things we have to say here are not priority. Because God's not priority. Prayer's not priority. Because God's not priority. Worship is not priority. Because God's not priority. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. If I, I, if I can get a person committed to Christ first, we got them. It's not hard. They'll be there every time the door's open. They'll be, they'll want to help. They'll want to, why? Because they're committed to God. They're committed to Christ. And Jehoiada, Jehoiada wanted to make sure that these guards were committed to God before we go any further. He said, you want the will of God? 
Yes. Do you want to go according to the law of Moses? Yes. Do you want the rightful heir? Yes. Okay, buddy, this is what we're going to do then. One third here, one third here, one third here. You protect the king. If it comes near him, you kill them. Amen. In other words, you're willing to risk your life for the Lord. You're willing to lay your life down for God. You're willing to give it all. Amen. Isn't that right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I got to quit. So that's what we're doing on Wednesday nights. This is kind of where we're at. And uh, we're going to finish up chapter 11. I'm finished with chapter 11. And uh, I'm now starting to work on chapter 12. And, uh, boy, you know, Joe jo- 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 jo Ash, he's doing good as long as he stayed in church. As long as he heard the word. As long as he received the teaching of God's word. But after jo- Jehoiada was gone, then Jehoiada was gone, then, then he's like, you know, it's like all these other kings where they, they tear down om- almost all the idols and they leave some in the high places. It's like they don't. It's like, it's like most of the church today where they're pretty much committed all the way but not quite. They won't just give it all. They, they, they want enough of God to make them feel comfortable and to be promised heaven, but they're not. They're just not sold out. They won't buy the pearl. They won't buy the field with the treasure. They won't totally commit. Now, I don't know if people can go to heaven not being totally committed. Because Revelation tells me that he'll, if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you out. That's what it tells me. Now, that's what the Bible tells me. Now, I, you, you, each person has to come up with their own, you have to <laughs> work your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, but I'm just telling you, Lord, have mercy. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Lord, help us, amen. Let's all, let's all come up here tonight, amen. Let's come up here tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See what happens, see what happens on Wednesday nights when I have full freedom here. <laughs> we go a little bit longer, don't we? It's okay. Feel good, feel good. Praise God. Let's all come up here together tonight. And, and, uh, and uh, Mana. Come stand here. Sister Barb, come stand up here. Brother Tim, come stand up here. We're going to gather around you tonight, okay? Pray for God to touch these folks and to believe God for them in the name of Jesus, almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on up over here. Come on, come a little closer here. Brother Tim, come over here. Amen. Just come on in. Here, yep, and we're gonna lay hands on you as well. Come over here. That's fine. Let's let's lay let's lay hands on on these wonderful folks here tonight. Amen. Let's pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God. As our brother said tonight, thank God for the cross. There's salvation through the cross and healing through the cross. And we believe in the name of the Lord. And we believe in the God of miracles. And we pray for that tonight. Touch our sister, Father. Touch Sister Barbara in the name of the Lord. Asking you, God, Lord, the presence of God, the power of God, overshadow her, Lord. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Heal her, Lord, I pray. Heal her, Lord God, I pray. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring strength into her body, God. Breathe into her, Lord God. The spirit of life and power, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we pray for Jason tonight. We lift him up before you, God. He needs a miracle also, God. We pray in the name of the Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, touch that heart of his. The God that created that heart. The, heart, the God that keeps that heart going and keep it beating properly, Father, in the right rhythm, I pray. In the name of Jesus, no more stopping, oh God. But I pray for him. I lift him up before you. Ask him for the divine hand of God. Ask him for your protection. Ask him for your healing. Ask him for your power. Ask him, God. Come in that room, the presence of the Lord. Oh, God, I pray. Lord, come in your glory. Come in your presence, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We will believe the report of the Lord. We will trust in the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch Brother Tim tonight, God. Heal him, Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Of this sickness. Bronchitis, whatever it is, 
this cold, I pray in the name of the Lord that you will open up his bronchial paths and tubes. I pray that you'll give him strength. I pray, God, that you would touch him in your mighty power and by your grace, God. Oh, Jesus, we need you, God. Come, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we come against the spirit of infirmity. We pray for complete healing, divine healing. We pray in the name of the Lord. We pray the prayer of faith. We pray believing God. We pray, God, for a miracle working God to move in the name of Jesus. We pray right now. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord that heals us of all of our sicknesses, of all of our diseases. We pray. We commit it to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen my brother. Touch him, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch our sister Mana, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Come upon her, Lord, I pray. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, we pray. As the Bible tells us to do, we anoint with oil, just like the Word of God says. So in obedience to the Word of God and by faith, we ask you, God, for a miracle. We pray right now that you would show up in your power, in your presence. Lord, and heal our sister, Father. As the Word of God says, your presence was there to heal. And I pray in the name of the Lord for the presence of God, the touch and the power of thy spirit. I pray for this. I pray, God, for the hand of the Lord. Touch her, Lord. Open up these arteries. Unclog them. I pray in her neck. In the name of Jesus, unclog them. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. We believe in the power of God. Save me, Lord, and I'll be saved. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. You sent your word, and you healed them. We pray in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord God. Come, our, our healer, Lord. Rest upon our sister. Rest upon her, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Almighty God, heal her, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Uh, keep praying. I have my wife come up here as well. Would you come up here? I pray for you also. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keep praying, church, and believe in the Lord tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come over here, honey. Come over here. Just lay hands on her as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray, almighty God. Hallelujah. God, we need your touch and your power. Lord, I thank you that my wife is doing better. But God, we hunger and desire and thirst and pray for complete healing. In the name of Jesus, almighty God, let us by faith tonight as a church reach and touch the hem of your garment and believe you, God. Lord, I'm asking for a miracle as well. I pray that you would heal her stomach. I pray in the name of the Lord that you would heal this GERD's disease, acid reflux, and the problems and complications it's causing. We pray in the name of the Lord, heal the lining of her stomach. I pray, giving it to you, believing you, touching heaven on her behalf tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, almighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of the Lord, minister unto our sister tonight, God. Minister to Sister Terry tonight. Strengthen our sister. Lord, I'm asking in the name of the Lord, surround her with your presence, God. Love her, Lord God, as you do, Father. Just I pray for strength. I pray, God, that you'd heal her broken heart. I pray in the name of the Lord that you'll speak that word into her heart, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, our God, our Savior, the God of all comfort. Hallelujah. He will be a father to the fatherless. Praise God. He will comfort us. He will draw near to the brokenhearted. He will minister unto our hearts. He will draw so very close to those that are hurting in their hearts. Thank God that he has drawn so very close to you, Sister Terry. God is present. The Lord is here. The Lord of love. The Lord of healing. The Lord of compassion. The Lord that knows our feelings and knows our hurts. He knows our wants. He knows our cares. 
He knows. He knows when our heart is hurting. He knows and we come to him. We cast our care upon him because he cares for us. Thank God we have a high priest that can sympathize with our weaknesses and with our troubles. He knows. He knows everything. So we pray in the name of Jesus. So God comfort, I pray, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, Lord, we pray for all the needs tonight. We pray for Kevin. We pray for others. We lift them up before you, God. Ask you, Lord, to minister unto them in the name of Jesus. Minister unto them and heal them, oh, God, I pray. You are the answer. I pray for Christians. I pray for them to get right with God. I pray for them to repent of sin. I pray the name of the Lord. That's right. The church, the living God, would come back to God. Forsake the idols. I pray that we'd forsake our own way. I pray that we'd forsake the way of the world. And I pray that we'd come back to Christ. Dedicate our hearts and lives to the Lord. Coming back to the house of God. Coming back to the temple of the Lord. Coming back and rededicating our hearts and lives to Jesus. I pray the name of the Lord that we get our children in church. Get our grandchildren in church that will teach them the word of God, that will live it before them, that our home and the place of our dwelling will be a holy habitation for the presence of God. I pray, Lord, that we would have an atmosphere where the presence of God will be welcome. I pray for revival. I pray for the outpouring of your spirit. I pray for the former and fed light of rain. I pray for heaven to open up. I pray for Christians to be hungry for God, hungry for your presence, hungry for the truth, hungry for the word, hungry for revival, hungry for the Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. Let revival begin right now with this group of people. Let it begin with your chosen people, with the remnant of God's people. Let it begin, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, God Almighty. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you, O oh God. We glorify the Lord in this house. Give us hope tonight, God, that even if our children are grown and have their own families and their own place to live, we're still their parents. We're still their grandparents. And we can still live it. And we can be faithful and dedicated unto God. We will not live a compromising, sordid kind of Christian life. We will live a holy life unto God without compromise. And every chance and opportunity we have, we will deposit something of Christ into them. Their hearts will be open to receive. We pray for their hearts to be open and receptive to the Lord, that they would be humble unto the Lord. As our brother said tonight, to come to the cross, through the door of the cross, you have to bow down. You have to humble yourself to come to Jesus. There is no other way. It's a narrow way. Few there be that find it. Oh, God, I pray the name of the Lord for the soul to be saved, for our loved ones to be saved. Thankful that Tyra's mom gave her heart to the Lord because, God, you have been already dealing with her heart. Thank God. So, God, we give you all the praise. We're going to be a Jehoiada. We're going to be a Jehoshaphat in this church. That's the kind of people we're going to be. We're going to reach children for the kingdom of God. We're going to do our part. We're going to be faithful. Not just because we're saying it tonight, but change us, oh God, right now. We make this devotion and dedication and consecration unto you tonight. Oh God, almighty God, we thank you, Father, as we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am, sure can. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and listen, and we know emergencies come up. We understand that. We realize that. But we're talking about the issues of the heart. In other words, in other words, there's the, we want the desire revived in us. So God, revive that desire. That's it. In all of us. I like that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. <laughs> 
Praise God. What a good service tonight. Wonderful presence of the Lord. God is good. God is wonderful. You folks are wonderful. And uh, tomorrow night, for the drivers, meet here at 5 o'clock that are driving the buses and the vans. And then uh, the rest of you, if you can, whatever can help, 6 o'clock out there. Get out there about, I don't know, quarter till 6, 10 till 6, something like that, if you want to make it. And, uh, but then other than that, we got PB&J this Friday, uh, Friday night and Saturday. And then we have regular service. And then Sunday night, of course, our Christmas cantata and singing a special, okay? God bless you all. We have a communion service Sunday night as well, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Oscar. Hallelujah, man. Go in this mighty years, my friend. Amen. <laughs> Praise God.